Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Cody. I'm the Associate Dean for Pre-21 Education at the new Orlando College of Boston Medical Medicine. Some of our first students in August of 2004. The, the direction of this school has been innovation, and our goal is to supply the osteopathic medical field with the most innovative students, the most innovative physicians. So we started day one with an innovative medical school. And the way I'm talking about that is osteopathic medicine's curriculum that reflects this innovation. And I'm here today to explain to you uh, some of the things that are different about our field and some of the things that, that, that you may be familiar with and, and the differences uh, when you come to this school and you get here. So we like to think of the first day of medical school as being the first day of the curriculum. I know it's like it's just school, but it is the first day. Everything you do at this school, um, in this curriculum, reflects how you're going to be as a physician. So yeah, you begin the tribulation at the time you're already beginning the profession of osteopathic medicine. So welcome to the profession. First day of the profession is your first day career, and you're considered a student doctor at that point. And you can begin your training. So everything you do in this medical school is going to be applied to you as a as a medical physician in the future. So everything you learn here will be learned for the sake of your career, not just for the school. Yeah. But it's still school. What's the difference? The difference is fast, actually. At OCOM, our mission is to graduate and become competent physicians. But now you're no longer learning for yourself. You're learning for your future patients. Okay? So literally, you think back to the point you made and what you've learned so far and what you hate to do so far. Little, if any, of what you've learned previously matters to your career. Remember the physics that you had and the laws of things, they don't necessarily matter to your career as soon as you get started. But everything you learn here will matter to your career. And from the matriculation day forward, you'll learn for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'm sorry, but medicine is a lifelong learning field. You will become lifelong learners. This is what our curriculum is designed to create is lifelong learning. that may not work well for you. And so previously, uh, you would be a methods player because it was kind of crude that we say by garage and garage bed. It's kind of crude because in the past when uh, someone developed a lecture for you or something, a treatment that someone decided that you would do, then you, because you had uh, developed uh, excellence in this type of based on what they think that you could do. And then you teach the difference. You have one examination and one exam. And then they go to the next step. It's called one step marking. And uh, in this school, it's going to be a little bit different. So, of course, there's memorization. But there's way too much stuff to memorize back then in the field of medicine. Rather, what you do is an application of what you have learned. And that's what's different from Local, you're going to convert to an active learning. It's really something called case based feedback and application of knowledge. So, this method of success is much easier actually. It's not memorization based, however, and there is some memorization, but it's the application of that memorized material that's going to pay dividends for you as you head into life in the future. So, you will learn uh, materials as if you're learning them. You need to know it to learn them rather than. Just memorizing it for the sake of it. So it will stick with you longer and you'll master the material. It's something called mastery rather than just knowing it. And by the way, this is the way physicians learn in virtually every day after medical school. They learn through the need to know something. They seek out the information. They learn it, they apply it, they, they resolve the issue with the patient, and they move to the next one. And I can tell you that learning is vastly as important as a physician as, as it was as a medical student. 
this is the reason why. The reason to have to apply something to make it stick is not to bring up the story. So, to make a point to you, this is a car. This car is actually not my first car. I wish it was, but this is a car like my first car. I bought this car as well as my first car in the future, about 16 years old. The car had to be pulled from the dirt. And I didn't have anyone to help me fix it. So I secured a book uh, that told me I'm joking that you don't pull over the street. This is a 1970 car. And I read that children's manual, and it gave me a diagnostic section. It told me I diagnosed the wrong car. I diagnosed the wrong car. I fixed it. I can remember to this day pulling the handle on the front edge of that car and getting it to run again. But the car was fixed, and I got that feeling of satisfaction that comes from self discovery. I identified the problem. I had a need to fix it. I learned how to fix it, and I applied it. And for that reason, it was vivid in my mind all these years later. That's the point of this kind of a curriculum. So it's a new approach to learning. It's called mastery over manipulation skills. I encourage you, I know it's hard, but we're going to encourage you to learn without concern of the examination. Where is the examination for that position in your life? It doesn't exist other than being able to explain it to your patient, to diagnose it, to help make sure you're on the right track. So in this school, we start that from day one. We're going to encourage you to learn without concern of the examination whether that's coding or our examination, then we'll get to that. Right? Students treat the cases as if they were tested. We try to learn and apply all the basic science mechanisms. So instead of learning every step of the thread cycle, you will learn only the parts of the thread cycle that apply to the clinical case. It reduces minutia for you and allows only the things that apply to the case that you would have to commit to because you're applying it to the case, is master, and you're talking with other people and applying it, 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 it becomes something you really don't want to do. So you learn as if you need to know all the basic science, not because you need to extend the lab for the examination. And if you follow that simple rule, you will be well prepared for any examination. If you learn and apply all the, the mechanisms of the human kidney, physiology, biochemistry, and that kind of thing, then I can't ask you a question about the kid that you can't answer. So you will be well prepared for any exam because you know it's a true one. Right? So you're no longer studying for examinations. You're learning and mastering material for your future patients at your school. That's hugely important in any part of your presentation. In this school, you will have cases that will have basic sciences in them of system studies, right? It's easy to do for the first semester. For the second semester, third, and fourth, you will be reapplying things that you learned. So you're adding to your information base. There's a very well known uh, strategy for learning, a very well known method for learning that talks about learning things and putting them into memory. But then the most important thing is pulling them out of memory. So if we pull things out of our memory, pull knowledge out continually and apply it, we're mastering that material. And it's far better than just figuring out the examination on your own. That's the concept behind this curriculum. It's a built around clinical application and lifelong learning. We use a methodology of building towards lifelong learning in our program called CBM, which stands for Case Based Learning. So we utilize a unique form of self-directed learning. We call this case-based inquiry. So why is this important? You learn what you learn out of necessity, self-interest, or from someone else, or your patient or family member, etc. Not because someone wants you to know the material for an exam, but because you need to know it to answer a question that spiked a notebook in your head, which is you. So you need to know that material because you want to know it for the whole information. That's our curriculum. Something learned that way will stay with you uh, forever because there's no reason uh, to 
It is the satisfaction that comes from sweatiness. Something that you bring that way to your mercy. It is not only a temporary that's put out and then you have to pay. It's only the thing that you give as you as you give as you give as you give as you give as you give. How is it? How do we do that? How is it going to do that? How do we do this? Well, students are going to need groups of seven or eight uh, for something called a case based plan. You're given uh, information to learn before the group begins. These are called self-directed or, S- or, or SPLs or assignments. They outline uh, the objectives of our systems and courses. But we do not have systems and courses. Uh, we have many of them. And in those courses, they will create objectives that link to a case. Then you learn those objectives ahead of time. Then you get the, to the case. And on day one, you will apply what you learn. So you and a group uh, will apply the physiology and you will say, this is what's happening, this is why the pH is this way, this is why the urinalysis said this, and this is why, how, what, where, when, these are the questions you ask, you ask, during the group session as the case is being disclosed to you, the president. So you apply those basic sciences that you can get as you learn to prep you for that case ahead of time. It's not through self-directed learning, and it's not through problem-based learning. It's actually a, a hybrid version. And we, we like this model because it allows you to use the mechanism that you learn versus just learning what you learn in class. So day one is a group meeting to apply what you learn. And as you go through the case, you come up with other things that you might be thinking about. And you write those things, something called learning missions, things for your group to learn. Outside. So you'll meet two times a week, Tuesday and Thursday. And so you'll pick things up on Tuesday, your first meeting, that you'll want to know for Thursday meeting. Then the task is on Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday at some time, Thursday morning, maybe. Then you learn at least the new silver you know. And on Thursday, you come back and apply everything you learned to the case. You already know the case at this point. So you go back and talk about all the mechanisms of the case. If you do this rapidly, you will be well prepared for any examination that you can imagine of the sciences that you learn in those systems and courses. Okay. So what so so there was a survey done recently that talked about what do we do as physicians, simply think as far as physicians, and if they ask the physicians who will present to the students, uh, what do you need? What, what kind of student, what is the student planning as they come out into the world? What do you think? What do we need? What, what do students need? What do we need to do better to prepare our students? So here's a short list of some of the things they said. We need students with critical thinking skills, critical thinking skills. That seems to be lacking. We need students that work in a group environment. We need students that care for our patients. We need students that are flexible. We need students with social awareness or cognitive ability. I design with with absolute intention of bringing the center of competence and goodness. Not just knowledge of information, but also caring for the patients. And some of my final comments I'd like to make is learning this way is fun. You'll become master in both the informational learning and group interaction, which is part of that list of needs, right? Also, in self-directed learning and in lifelong learning, it's okay to be willing to group settings. Fine, that's where you practice those things. And sometimes you're actually memorable and you may want to do things that way. Students also learn to use proper resources and to give and take constructive criticism. Students become something called a gold star in lifelong learning. Thank you for listening. And if this curriculum sounds like it's something that aspires to you and you could be professional uh, osteopathic physicians in this curriculum, and we welcome you back. I hope to see you.